Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope all is well. Hope everyone's doing all right. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to get into 10, 3, 10, 4, and 10, 5 perimeter area and volume. And it's easier to talk about these three together, comparing the three versus talking about them separately. So we'll talk about them all today. So we'll look at the rectangle and compare them in all three phases. So whenever you're talking about the perimeter, uh, you do not need a formula. All right, all you would be doing is adding up all your sides. Now there are formulas for certain shapes when it comes to the perimeter. Uh, like here, uh, the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle, 2L plus 2W. But you, like I said, you don't need it because all you have to do is add up all your sides. The perimeter represents the outside, you know, a fencing, um, like on the um, police shows when they say go set a perimeter, talking about a border. So that's what the perimeter represents. That's why you can just add up your sides. And then when you finish calculating um, the perimeter, it will be in your regular measurement. So if you were inches, it will stay inches. If it was feet, it will stay feet. If it's meters, it will stay meters. And so I'll show you how your measurement can change a little bit in a second. Any questions on perimeter? And we're gonna do some problems with it, but just comparing all three first. Now the area, for area and volume, um, you will need a formula and every shape has a specific formula that you will need. Every um, shape has a specific formula when you talk about area of volume. Area is the amount of space that a shape takes up two-dimensionally. So we're in the perimeter, we're talking about the outside. The area, we're talking about the inside. And then here's the formula for the area of a rectangle. A equal to uh, L times W, length times width. And when you finish calculating area, it will always be in that measurement squared. So squared inches or inches squared, feet squared, squared footage or meter squared. And very similarly, the volume you will need a formula for the volume. It's the amount of space that a shape takes up three-dimensionally. So now notice it's length times width times height. And then when you're done calculating, your measurement will be cubic or cubed. Any questions, any questions? Okay, first example, I want to find the perimeter and the area of this rectangle. All right, so our length is 30 inches, width is 20. 
doesn't matter which one you find first, whether it be the perimeter or the area. So went ahead and used the rectangular uh, rectangle uh, formula for the perimeter. Once again, when it comes to perimeter, if you want to use a formula, that's fine. If not, just add up your size. And so 2L plus 2W, that's 2 times 30 plus 2 times 20. All we're doing is plugging in for L and W length and width. That'll be 60 plus 40, which is 100 inches. And then with our area, length times width, 30 times 20 is 600. And don't forget, your measurement will be squared, inches times inches, inches squared. So 600 inches squared. All right, questions on that before we go to another one. Next one, we want to find the area of the triangle. All right, so the formula for the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So base is normally used for the bottom side. And then your height, you see, is six. So that's what we did over here. So plug me in accordingly. One half base times height, that's one half times 12 times six. Now that one half is not multiplied or distributed to the 12 and six, you just multiply it to one of them. So one half of 12 is six, six times six is 36, and that's centimeter squared. Let's go look. All right, so next we have a trapezoid. So normally, uh, once again, we keep in line with the base B being the bottom side. That top side would be A. So A would be six, B would be 14. Then your height, height of your trapezoid would be H, which is seven. So formula for the area of a trapezoid, one half times H times the quantity of A plus B. Plug in your values accordingly. One half times seven times the quantity of six plus 14. Perform order of operations first. So you do six plus 14, which is 20. Now, if I was doing this by hand, you know, if you're just gonna throw it in the calculator, it doesn't matter, just throw it in the calculator. But if I was doing this by hand, I would take the one half, multiply it times the 20, which would give me 10 and then seven times 10 is 70. So that's what I was, you know, signifying here. Um, but you could do one half times seven, half of seven is 3.5, 3.5 times 20, still get you back to 70. So it doesn't matter what order you do it in. Yep, gotta be a calculation. And once again, area means your feet should be squared. Questions and questions. So all these formulas, you know, they don't change just because you're in a different math or at a different level or whatever. You can ask Siri, Google, Alexa, all of them will be the same. So if you need the formula for a triangle, you look it up, you know, it's gonna be the same one that's in your book. So it's up to you whether you wanna go straight to the book or not. All right, so circles. So just have to make sure we're clear on how they may give you the information. 
So if you have a line going through your center from one end of your circle to or one point in your circle to the other point, that's your diameter. If it's a line going from your center to one point in the circle, that's your radius. So um, they don't have to say, this is my diameter, this is my radius. They can just put the number there and they assume you know the symbolism of what, they get, what they're telling you or what they're giving you. So now if you have one, then you have the other because of their relationship. Diameter is the same thing as two times the radius. Your radius is the same thing as half of the diameter. So if you're given the diameter is 30, take half of that, that'll be your radius. And then if you're giving your radius to be seven, Oh, my eraser. Uh, your radius would be seven multiplied at times two, and your diameter is 14. So over here, once again, just emphasizing that if you have one, then you can find the other. Okay, scrolling up some. So here are our two formulas for the circle. We have our circumference and our area. So there's no such thing as a perimeter of a circle because you know you say adding up all your sides, but a circle doesn't have sides. So the equivalent for the perimeter for circles will be your circumference. And so that will be two times pi times r. The numerical, numerical value for pi is 3.1415, and then that's just a run on decimal to infinity. And then your area is pi times r squared. Can you scroll up? Let's get some copy. Anybody still have a this conference in the area? All right. So let's find the circumference and the area of this circle. Give the exact and the approximation. We'll talk about the difference between the two answers in a second. But it gives us the circle right here. With the line going from end to end and 20 inches. All right. So now, according to both of the formulas, circumference and area, we need the radius. They give us the diameter here. So we have to take half of our radius, half of our diameter, excuse me, will be our radius, which is 10. All right. So always make sure you're careful with the information that they give you. Notice they don't put, you know, D5 diameter or alpha radius. They give you the diagram or the figure and expect you to know that's the diameter. All right. So when you go to find a circumference or the area, it doesn't matter which one uh, you decide to find first. So everybody done with directions and scroll up, scroll up. Okay. So I found the circumference first. Two pi r. R is 10, so we plug in 10 for r. So that's two times pi times 10. So simplifying your answer as much as possible with pi still there as a symbol is your exact answer. So notice what I did was I did two times 10, which is 20, and they gave me 20 pi, right? So 20 pi is my exact answer. That's because pi still represents 3.1415, you know, on to infinity. It does not become an approximation until I calculate it fully and then round to whatever decimal place math lab tells me to round to. So always make sure you uh, pay attention to what math lab wants for you. They may say one decimal, they may say two, but uh, 20 times pi, you throw that in your calculator. So pi in your calculator, and that'll give you 62.8. I just round it to the tenth place. And that is your approximation. Okay. 
Then do the same thing for your area. Plug in 10 for R, so that's pi times 10 squared. 10 squared is 100, so that's 100 pi. That is your exact answer. And then 100 times pi will give you 3, 30, uh, 314.2. And uh, that's inches squared for your area and just inches for your circumference. All right, questions and questions. All right, let's go look. Everybody good? Next, we're looking at volume. Volume um, has the same feel or same flow as area. Uh, they give you a, um, a shape, give you the dimensions of the shape, and then from there, you just need to use the, the proper formula in order to calculate the volume. So every shape has its own formula. So here, the radius of the base of the cone is eight centimeters. The height of the cone is 12 centimeters. So they may give you uh, the information in word form like this, or they may give you a diagram. Uh, I believe this one gave us the words and I just went ahead and drew the diagram as to what they're saying, but you should be okay with doing either or. Um, they give you, they tell you it's a cone, tell you the radius is eight, and then the height is 12. So you see the formula here, one third pi r squared h is the formula for the volume of a cone. So plugging accordingly is one third times pi times h squared plus 12. I was simplifying it myself. So I took the one third into the 12. It left me with four. h squared is 64. 64 times four is 256. So 256 pi is your exact answer. Then multiply 256 times the pi. That'll give you 804.25 cubic centimeters. All right, any questions for the world? All right. So next we're looking at a cylinder. We have the height is four meters. And once again, take note of the diagram. That's your diameter because it goes from end to end of your circle or point to point through the center. So that's the diameter. So we have to take half of the six to get the radius because the formula for the cylinder, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So half of that six is three. And that's the value we'll plug in for r. So that's pi times three squared plus four. Three squared is nine, nine times four is 36. 36 pi is that exact answer. Go ahead and multiply the 36 times pi, and that'll give you 113.1 cubic meters.
All right, any questions, any questions? Questions on volume, area, perimeter, anything else at this point? Or should we do it? All right, next one. Here we're looking at surface area. It says the diameter of the base of a cone is five meters and the slant height is four meters, find the surface area of the cone. So you have to look up the formula for the surface area of a cone. And that's pi r squared plus pi r l. So here they give us the diameter. So we have to take half of that because we need r. That's 2.5. And L, it actually represents the slant height when it comes to surface area. So um, couldn't use S because S would probably confuse you with surface area. S also represents speed and physics. Um, couldn't use height because that's H. Couldn't use H for height. So I guess they went to the next letter in slant, which was L. You know, so you ask them why they use L. So now you plug it in. Power squared is pi times 2.5 squared. Then pi times 2.5 times 4. 2.5 squared is 6.25. 2.5 times 4 is 10. So we have 6.25 pi plus 10 pi, which is 16.25 pi. That's your exact. Then your approximation, 51.05 meter squared. Questions, questions, questions. Can we go up? All right, so we got one more. One more thing. And this is coming out of 10.3 uh, angles of a polygon. It just didn't flow with talking about perimeter area and volume. So I just saved it for the end. 10.3 uh, angles of a polygon. Polygon, just any shape um, that has size. So you're talking about triangle, square, uh, rectangle, trapezoid, the sum of the measures of the angles of a polygon with n sides is n minus two times 180. That's the formula. All right, so oh, somebody says something in the chat. Yeah. That far, is that good? Or do you need more?
Uh, so we talk about this and how far you want me to go. All right, I will right, we'll pause for a second. Let me know what you think. All right, have a look and have a good this little up. Yep. Yeah. So let's go back here. All right, so example under here, I'm going to find the sum of the measures of the angles of an octagon. B, find the measure of angle A in the figure, and the figure is a little further down, so we'll get to that in a second. Let's go up and see, find the measure of angle B in the figure. All right, so here's the figure right here. Give yeah, my best, it's an octagon, but we got them slash, slashes on each side. And so the slash mean that all sides are equal. Every, every side that has that slash uh, means it's equal to each other. And uh, each one of our sides have the slash. And then also if all our sides are equal, don't forget your sides and your angles have a relationship. If all the sides are equal, then all angles in the octagon are also equal. All right, then I scroll up. All right, so octagon, oct, uh, that prefix O-C-T means eight. So if you're talking about uh, octopus, eight legs, um, you know, October is actually the uh, originally the eighth month of the year. Then when they switched it to 12, to 12 months, they tried to change the name and um, October just stuck. So it was originally eight. So OCT uh, lets you know we're dealing with eight years. So octagon means eight sides, that means N is equal to eight. So now we throw it into that um, formula, N minus two, 
times 180. So that's eight minus two, which is six. Six times 180 will be 1080. So all eight angles will add up to give you 1080 in an octagon. All right, any problems or questions with A? All right, so B tells us to find the measure of angle A. A is one of the angles inside of the octagon. And if we know that all of the angles in the octagon are equal, I can take that 1080 divided by eight and see that my answer is 135 for each one of the angles in the octagon, including angle A. So 135 is our answer. Any questions on B? So question C asks us to find angle B. So we notice that B creates a straight angle with A, straight line, straight angle. That means that they both add up to give you 180 degrees. So if I want to figure out what B is, I can take what A is, subtract it from 180, and that'll give me B. And so 180 minus 135 is 45. Questions and questions and questions. Make sure we all right. Uh, that's it. Oh, down here, I'm just reemphasizing how this thing works. Man, we knew that. Um, for a triangle, there's 180 degrees as far as the angles when you add them up. And so we took the three sides, three minus two. That would be one, one times 180. That's how we get our 180. And then for a square or a rectangle, it's four sides, four minus two is two. Two times 180 is 360. And that makes sense because each one of these, 90 degrees, so 90 times four, 360. So that works for any of your polygons. Ah, sorry. Had a sneeze and it didn't go out. So, uh, any questions, concerns, comments? Everybody good, everybody straight. So, we covered um, up to chapter 10. So, don't forget, everything's open right now. If by some chance uh, you may want to pick your grade up. Or if you may need to do something for the first time, you know, some people know who, who I'm talking to, um, you know, everything's open. Who you grade up is that time. So uh, the date that's in there now is for 10th week grades. So um, you have the opportunity to make your 10th week grade, uh, whatever you want to make it. Uh, I don't know if we'll finish chapter 11 by the time 10th week, but we'll see. But right now we know that everything up to chapter 10 um, is going to be in the 10th week grade. Right. Questions, concerns, comments, anybody in Zoom, anybody before we close out today? Oh, last thing, next class will, you know, at the end of every chapter, I try to have a review day. So next class will be a free day, review day, do what you want to with it, I'll be here. If you have questions, feel free to come up, um, you know, uh, tune in, log in, whatever you call it or come to class and I answer whatever questions you have. But if you don't have any questions, you don't have to worry about missing new material. I will not cover any new material on this class. All right. Oh, say again. 
Right, right. And I might make a decision on that, an executive decision on that, since that's the day before spring break, right? It's not unless that's for spring break. So we'll see. We'll see what we're going to do. I know for a fact we're not going to do anything new on Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, just pay attention to your emails. So uh, other than that, you guys have a good one. Be safe. And I will see you next class. Mm -hmm.